Um, with the devastation of the ohia trees all over this island, mm -hmm. with the ohia fungus that's attacking it, has this hurt the population of our birds? What has happened is extensive and it's, it's alarming, and it does affect birds. Uh, ohia is the uh, backbone of, of the forest ecosystem for most of our native birds, with a, a few exceptions. Palila, you know, they don't have ohia in the first place, but most birds are, um, ohia is very important to them, and so this is cause for real concern. That that's sort kind of the short answer. I I don't tend to give very many short answers, but <laughs> there's a short answer for you. Uh, on the so, oh, so, so excuse me, um, another question to that question. So what is being done? Should the bird population become even more effective with this rod that's affecting all of our ohia trees? Because once the ohia tree goes, then the forest canopy goes. Once the forest canopy goes, it affects the other trees. Once that goes, then the invasive species of weeds and bushes takes its place. So what is Managin doing? What is, how, how will it affect your research work? I mean, all of this has to come into factoring into your research. Right. Well, I won't speak for the whole uh, research or management community, but I'll, I'll, I'll just mention a new project that we're going to be starting. Um, we were uh, successful in getting a small amount of money to, um, to look at, and this is going to sound a little strange, I'm sure. Uh, I'll try to explain it. Um, we're we're going to be looking at um, plant hosts of caterpillars, and the reason we're going to be doing that is um, uh, caterpillars are really the number one food for our native forest birds as a general rule. Uh, they feed it to their offspring it's important to most of the adults, too. Um, and so just as an example, at Hakalau, where we examine um, bird droppings for what, you know, what can we find in the bird droppings? Well, the little mandibles, the little jaws, basically, of caterpillars were really, really the, the key thing for many species, including the endangered ones. And, and this is not like a real surprise. I mean, caterpillars are, are important bird foods around the world, uh, beetles and things are also important. But uh, our thought is, because we have very few native trees and shrubs, relatively speaking, uh, it's important to know, there, we, we identified three caterpillar, we, we don't know the species, but we, we can identify them just by their looks, and we'll try to identify them by species under this project. But there's only three at Hakalau that are really really important and all the rest are eaten but you know not that important so our goal is to figure out do these three caterpillars are they uh, are their main host plants ohia or olapa or you know what are their host plants and we're hoping that it's not just ohia if it's just ohia then we don't have any <laughs> we don't have any real solution but um if it is let's say ohello and Pukiave, you know, Olapa, you, you name it, whatever, whatever other hosts there may be for these three important caterpillar types, um, then that's, that's the news we'll take to the managers and say, well, you know, if you think Ohia is going to be declining on, at, at Hakalau, you may want to be planting these alternative hosts. Now, that, that only goes so far. I mean, that's, but, you know, right now, I think we're kind of bailing the boat with a teaspoon, because this is a problem that's just enormous. You know, if you if you truly could wipe out most of the ohia in ten or twenty years, thirty years, or something like that, they're just uh, you know everybody's caught short. There's just no easy answer. You know, the sphinx, the blackburn sphinx moth, you know, uh, actually the ha does well with the tobacco plant, which is not yeah. native here. Yeah. But it survives very well with that, with that particular habitat. And, uh, you know, out uh, you know, where Willie Joe lives, you know, there used to be in Keanakolu and Piha and La Uh forest used to be, you know, covered, smothered in some cases uh, with banana polka. That's right. But you also had a forest full of redbirds, too. Yeah, that's And right. when the biological, whatever it was that they 
killed off the banana polka with. Uh, you go into Piha, the last time I was in there, I'm not even sure I even saw yeah. an Eevee at all, where there used to be a lot of them in there. That's right, yeah. And I'm just curious if the unintended consequences from some of these actions, mm -hmm. um, you know, if the, spe if the species itself is important, you know, like the Alala, um, you know, because we know that if we kept it in captivity, or maybe if you're able to give it to, you know, zoos in the mainland, or like they did with the Nene, ship them off to England or whatever, you know, we have mouflon here, we have animals here that are extinct, or maybe not extinct, but mm -hmm. not doing well in their home territory, but they're doing great here. Yeah. You know, so is it the species, or is it that we have to have this little terrarium, aquarium, or yeah. whatever it might be, is that so necessary if really it's a species? And you talk about this caterpillar. You know, maybe some other caterpillar might do the same job that might, not a native plant, but, you know, it's, you know, some introduced plant. Uh, That's right. But might cause that species to be able to flourish, you know, with some new. Once you start tinkering with food webs and all the rest of the interactions that are going on out there, you run a risk of going too far in one direction or not knowing what the consequences are going to be. And that's, that's one of the important points that we are constantly talking about is, well, to the manager, I might say, here's what might benefit EEV, let's say. Um, and they might, but they have to very carefully consider, well, if I do that, what, what, might, what bad consequences might occur that Banco didn't think about? You know, so it's like, well, you know, so the whole thing, I mean, and of course it adds to the frustration because it just, everything slows down because now you're always looking over your shoulder. Well, are we, uh, is the manager potentially going to make a mistake that would be worse than not doing anything at all? A lot of these things are just not knowable. I mean, it's just, you don't know. Nature is so complex that our simple way of thinking about things could lead to some serious, well, and has led to serious problems in the past. We don't know what mistakes we're currently making, and we don't know what mistakes we're going to make in the future. And the only thing we can do is keep that in mind and say, okay, if you take this action, remember, there could be all kinds of waves rippling out from the pebble you throw in the, in the pond. So we take it very seriously, you know, if, um, if, if, if we say, well, you should eliminate this, you may be eliminating a food resource for another native species that, that's had to use that as an alternate food, you know, because the nat the, their preferred food is gone. So all these things are very, very delicate and f difficult, uh, really, to figure out. Yeah, Paul, don't, don't you think that they actually did know by um, killing the banana polka, that that would that they oh. that they knew that the EEV were feeding on the banana polka. They yeah. knew that. Oh, they they knew that. Yeah, yeah. and and it, I, I, I would right. Right. is the philosophy well, this population will die back because we'll kill the banana polka, but um, native species will fill in, and then the population will come back up the road. Well, see, this is exactly the thing, is that if you're only thinking of EEV you may or may not decide to kill banana polka, but if you're, th if you're thinking at the forest level, saying, well, okay, we want a native ecosystem to be functioning, EV are part of it, and Akiapola Ao are part of it, and so on, then your calculation may, may be different, because you're saying, well, am I only interested in EEV, or am I interested in the whole forest bird community, and, or the whole plant community? Mm -hmm. And if, if, if banana polka is smothering areas, you know, which, I mean, it, frankly, it, 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 Piha was really, <laughs> that was pretty bad. Um, you got to think, well, okay, if we remove it, it, it could have some negative effects on EEV and maybe if some other birds, but it, overall we think maybe the, the, the positive effects outweigh it. But now, mm -hmm. and what you didn't know is it, the ohia would have the rapid ohia death. Right. You never know what's coming around the corner. So maybe yeah. hindsight. Well, yeah. I mean, um, banana polka is a very rich nectar source. I mean, it's, it's um, uh, I won't go into all the details of the, the nectar. It's, it's a different 
quality nectar than ohia. Yeah. Um, it's very rich, it's very high in sucrose, uh, and birds love it, um, but they don't, they don't require it. So, you know, I'll, I'll point out a study that was done <clears throat> by um, a PhD student at University of Hawaii, Manoa, and what she found was she put radio transmitters on EEV at Hakalau and then watched what happened. And what she found was a lot of birds going down in lower elevation to uh, areas of ohia and polka, but mainly ohia, uh, during the non-breeding season. So there were some, not all birds, but some of the birds that she tagged went miles, actually, down Lapahoihoi area, uh, fed for maybe some of them for several weeks and then came back up home to Hakalau. Other birds stayed at Hakalau. She found that the, the birds that tended to, to be successful nesters tended to stay at Hakalau, but if you weren't successful, you're more likely to go in search of better foraging grounds because you didn't have as good a territory at Hakalau as, as the, the, top, the top birds had. Mm -hmm. um, and so these birds, when they go down to the lower elevations, they're at risk of being bitten by mosquitoes that are carrying avian malaria. But my point is, is that um, it's, it's like, well, um, I, 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 think, I think it was probably um, a good decision to, 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 to go after banana polka because I think it was really smothering a lot of native forests and in the long run, Again, I mean, if we look at the short term, it might be different than if we look at the long term. But if we're looking decades ahead and saying polka could be really, really smothering the forest, and in the end, all we're going to be left with is a lot of polka, then, then a lot of species that are depending on other native plants in Piha could be affected by that. Yeah, well, you know, uh, couldn't there be a milder approach to things? Banana polka? No banana polka. Mm -hmm. Sheep, no sheep. I mean, why, as scientists, wouldn't you want to be a little more gentle toward nature, being that it's so complex and there's so many unknown things? And as scientists, wouldn't you like to be able to be corrected, um, you know, gather nat new information and admit, well, maybe we didn't do the right thing, you know, and sure. maybe we should do something different. And, you know, at representing the game animals, um, that's all we ask. We love the native species. Sure. Of course, as you see, we're concerned. We love them. We want to know, and we support you. But we'd like to see some um, uh, more of a moderate approach and a more of a fair approach to, to the ecosystem where everything can coexist. Because you say, well, um, <clears throat> the sheep were overly browsing the mamani. They have a history of devastation. Well, maybe because they weren't managed properly. And we push heavy about management, managing mm -hmm. the game, finding the pr right population and keeping it. Sure. Yeah. Personally, I, I believe in moderation in most things. But, you know, w um, so often we don't have... Uh, control over how much or how little to manage something. I, I mean, a, a, as a researcher, we have no control because it's it's not our kuleana at all. Um, and it's actually, in my experience, rare when a manager actually can get to zero on something. It's like, wow, <laughs> that's that's a rare event. Um, usually, they're struggling to just knock things down to a level that's noticeably lower. I mean, that that's often the case. Case in point is almost almost any weed. Polka is a good example of um, where biocontrol, they used a fungus that's pretty darn effective. Whether it will continue to be effective or, you know, it's effective in that area. I don't know if it's spreading to other polka populations or not, but it, it's kind of, you can count them on one or two hands the number of times it's like that weed, they knocked it way down. You know, if you, if you look at the history of biocontrol, Hawaii was one of the proving grounds, Australia, Hawaii, California. Back in the uh, late 1800s, they brought in all kinds of things to control agricultural pests. Yeah, mongoose. Uh,